I'm Justin. And I'm Sam. And this is episode five of Antifurt On Air. Five. In this episode, we're going to be talking about props, where to find materials to work with. And, and whatnot. Building! Building stuff, yes. Props and steampunk. Tools! Stores. There are, there are several good stores to go to. The number one store to, store, stores to probably go to are the antique stores. They have period items that you can actually read. That's so. kind of a luck of the drum. It is. Sometimes you get really lucky, like... I found this. The stock of the gun, but... Uh, yeah, it was 30 bucks, and better than buying a BB gun and sawing it in half. Cheaper, too. And then there's uh, your basics, your hardware store. store. You got your screws, bolts, your glues, and... Plumbing supplies. Plumbing yeah. supplies are huge. Yep, yep, yep. They have those little, uh, what's some who's it that look like gears? The lock yeah. washers. Yes. Yeah, lock, lock washers. washers. They're good for yep. uh, decorative purposes and cheaper Just than gluing some. gears on things. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's cheaper than getting, going to a jewelry store. <laughs> Antique stores, you can also find old clocks from time to time that ha do have actual gears in them, so... But be yeah. careful, because most of these clocks have radioactive paints in them, and you do not want to be opening them. So well, they're not that bad. Yeah. Unless you're opening up a thousand clocks, you're not going to get cancer from it. A lot of clocks that look antique also, um... You know, they have this wonderful wood stuff, and then you try to open up in the back, and there's just a tiny little electric clock glued in there. So It is hit and miss, it's but very sometimes, easy to get. sometimes you get lucky. Uh, cheap stuff, you know, sure, yeah, you can go get a Maverick, but there's a whole bunch, whole bunch of dollar store stuff that's... Dollar, dollar store! store is good. I've, I've heard of several dollar store bits that, that happen, where you build an entire prop out of a dollar. Yeah. Yeah. They sound like really fun. We should do one. We should do one. Yeah. 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 Look for that. Anyway. We'll be doing. We'll, we'll be doing one. Yeah. And always be on the lookout for things that you may not expect to be used in a steampunk prop. The best prop pieces come from things like kitchenware, <laughs> plumbing pieces, stuff that you get in the wedding aisle. Strange enough, awesome stuff. So when you go shopping with your mother or friends or someone you don't really want to like hang out with but you end up shopping anyway, check out where they're buying stuff. TJ Maxx, Marshalls, you generally have good stuff. And you can't believe how many times I've used strange garden equipment. Garden Pops. equipment's are yeah. great. Gosh, I love sprinklers and hanging garden piece things and all those weird little odds and bits. Yeah. So, usually they're pretty basic and easy to paint. Painting. It's <laughs> important. Make sure you have a good area to paint in, though. <laughs> Doing it indoors like I've done, not not very good. Even when you have decent ventilation, still not a good idea. So right now I'm showing the folks at home some of the pictures we took while we were out at, at uh, Michael's uh, Craft Store and at uh, Harbor Freight Tools. So, there's been a lot of uh, neat things around, and uh, the craft stores have a bunch of brands that seem to be specifically targeting steampunks lately. Might as well talk about some, uh, some supplies. Well, yeah, we've talked about where we go now. What about what we Sure, buy? well, let's, let's talk about painting then. Painting? I'll be right back. You talk about the... About painting? So there are a few things that you need to do before you actually start painting. We'll mention another steampunk. GW actually does a very good panel on painting and how to actually go about making it look amazing. However, if you are just kind of starting out, first is sandpaper. Especially if you're with plastics, you want to sand down before you start painting. And before, you want to use something like denatured alcohol. It basically changes the composition of the plastic itself so that it absorbs <laughs> paint better. And if you're painting metal, denatured alcohol actually cleans what you're painting, so you don't get all that gunk, like, um, when you touch things, you have oil on your hands, 
you don't usually think about this, but this cleans it off, so the paint adheres better to <coughs> plastics or metals, depending on what you're painting. So what kind of paint to use? You got your spray paint. Spray paint. Awesome. For that stuff, you might want to use a face mask. Yes. The... And well ventilated. Yes. Or you go outside it's very... and you grab one of these big tarps. Very important. And just paint on that. Very important. Ye old acrylic paints. Yep. That's good for a lot of smaller projects. I use that on uh, yep. my little automatons. Acrylic paints also, if you use them on fabrics, <coughs> they do not come out. So be careful. Ah. Yeah, there's no good reason not to wear some goggles because you're steampunk. You know, if you got like a painting uh, hoodie. You Overalls. Know, good to wear. Good to have some painting clothes. All right. So we covered painting. What next? Material? What kind of materials would be good to build out of? Well, obviously there's metal. Something you can pick up at the uh, at a hardware store is essentially a... Decorative sheeting in a clover pattern. They come in all different sorts of patterns. You can put them around bottles and things. We like to pop rivet them. So this is what the pop riveter looks like. You put in a little pop rivet. It looks like it's on this little nail. Just slide it in. And then you squeeze. Squeeze! And it pops it in place, holding this little doodad between your metal pieces forever! You will not get these off, trust me. I've tried. There's one other thing that we've started trying. Expanding foam. This stuff, uh, it takes a little while to dry. It, it makes a, it It's very good for if you're making armor, hats. You're trying to fill gaps. Fill gaps in Nerf guns that you've taken parts out of, or like in squirt guns that you, you cut a giant hole in. Fill it with this stuff, cut it down, sand it a little bit, put... Paper on the outside and then spray paint it. Paper, or there are a bunch of other things, put duct tape over it. Yeah. Once you paint it, nobody will know. <laughs> also, uh, we don't have the yeah, we car bondo with us, do we? While we're on the expanding foam, uh, adhesives are really good. Foam reminded me of the Gorilla Glue. It really sticks uh, and expands. Yes. And there, there is a... Dries. There is a faster drying Gorilla Glue. It still expands, but it dries in half the time. Which is what? Half an hour? Instead Half an hour instead, yeah. of, an instead hour. of an hour. Yeah. Adhesives take time, let them have their time. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, if you need to hold something in place for a long time. Duct tape is your friend. Clamps. Oh, talking about waiting times, be sure to read your spray paint can's instructions. Yes. <laughs> Don't assume that all spray paints are the same because they are yeah. not. So you want to wait between the times of the spray paint before you put on an extra coat and go in small coats it'll look a lot better than the gloopy mess that you get when you just go i'm impatient so i've made a lot of gloopy messes it's not worth it it's no. not worth it no it's not bad product afterward along with that we have resin and resin. epoxy resin and epoxy are basically the same thing but with resin you have a few different types of resin this is a jewelry resin you can embed things in it there's also uh, tabletop resins, which are very hard when you kind of, cure uh, kind them. Of very thick varnish. Yeah. So generally, you can use this as a varnish too. This one I think takes two days to cure fully, but there are also resins that you can mold and make really cool stuff out of. So you can like hand mold it, carve it, sort of stuff. Another type of uh, adhesive would be the rubber cement, and this is great for fabrics, leather. Leather, mostly. It's flexible. Yep. But very, very strong. Very yep. good at bonding. If you want just a quick bond, just let it sit for like a minute and then smush it together, press it really hard. Eventually it'll come off, but it'll be good for like if you want to like see what some something looks like or you need to drill a hole in it. If you need to keep it in place so yeah. that something else can dry or so yeah. you can put say a hinge on it yeah. or, or something else that will keep it together more permanently. Yeah. Finally unglue this hot glue. Love. Uh, there are two different types of hot glue. There's low temperature and there's high temperature. The low temperature is softer. It's low temperature. It won't scald your skin off, but it's still pretty hot, so don't touch the tip. And it's less permanent. 
Yeah. The high temp, it holds better. It's a harder plastic. You can also get dual high low temp guns. Just be sure to buy the correct glue stick to whatever setting you have. Even the... It's almost worth buying both rather than getting one that does yeah. both. It's about equal price wise if you want one gun to say like trying to find your low temp one and all you can find is your high temp one but you really need the low temp one. The you low have temp, temp ones are at any craft store. Generally the the hardware stores will have them. Yes. I'm not sh- quite sure about the low temp. Some will have them. The last thing if you want to stick two things together. If you want to make sure if your machine can do leather, open or up. If you see any plastic in here, I don't recommend using leather on your machine. Anything heavier than garment leather. You can always try. If, if it starts making funny noises, don't do it. Because the cost of fixing it isn't worth it. Then there are obviously, for holding things together, screws, nails, shells, a hammer. Hammer. Don't hammer your fingers. It hurts. Yeah. <laughs> Ow! Tired of hitting your finger? <laughs> try the nailies. Sorry. <laughs> Nailies? Is that a thing? No. Okay. No. No, I'm just making fun of infomercials now. Finny C here with the Nailies. <laughs> now I have an infomercial. Thank okay. you. There you go. There you go. Okay. Well, what's the first thing you have to do? Have Plan an idea. Plan. Plan. <laughs> Plan out what you are trying to do. Hey, here's the plan oh. of something that I'm doing right now. I don't know if you can see that, but it's backpack design. Yeah. But... Graph paper, awesome. Awesome, <coughs> awesome, awesome. It gives awesome. a grid that you're able to actually measure out and scale mm-hmm. the, the ideas. I mean, if you're really fancy, you can drew up everything in CAD, but... You get things like protractor, compass, straight edges. Well, yeah. I guess with something like CAD, you can print your, your parts out with a 3D printer, so that's yes. pretty cool. There's a straight edge. With the level. So your 45 degree angles are actually 45 degrees. Made a mistake once or twice. Tape measure or mm. uh, a ruler. Measure twice, cut once. We recommend measuring three or four times. I've still messed up. <laughs> yeah. You, you can't cut more you're than You're being that. inappropriate. <laughs> I'm always appropriate. I don't know what you're talking about. Wow, this thing is broken yet. No, and it's up at seven feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. After you've drawn it all out and before you actually stick things together, you need to cut everything out. Scissors are pretty cheap. You can get them in giant packs. I think it's important to have a different pair of scissors for each project. These are my fabric scissors. Not my leather scissors, just my fabric scissors. If anybody uses these for anything else, they will dull and it will be a pain cutting fabric. A absolute pain. You do not want to use fabric scissors on any type of paper or any type of plastic or anything because next time you use them they will be useless. Period. These are my leather scissors. I'm mainly using X-Acto for leather because it's easier to cut. Speaking of X-Acto, get a pack of X-Acto knives uh, yeah. or at least replacement blades. Yeah. yeah, so we have all our types of X-Actos. These are pretty cheap to pick up too. Good investment. They come once... in all sorts of like carving blades and yeah. cool once you stuff. once you have the pen vise you can just replace with any blade you want getting the pen vises are a good investment punching holes in leather get a leather punch this is one type of leather punch if you have a lot of holes i don't recommend doing this especially you have to stitch leather they they're actually, they're very are. pain in the but they make them with like four prongs and with a mallet in. you can hammer them in and replace them so you do eight at a time versus one. These are good for um, different holes, like if you're doing belt holes. Or if you're putting in grommet. For like corsets or, or boots. Lace or them, if you have to lace it up. Anything, yeah. Then cutting metal, uh, there are a couple of options. One are the bolt cutters. This goes through Bad screws nails. like it goes through butter. Then there's cutting sheet metal. Your tin snips and they will cut through metal. Yeah, don't try to use scissors to cut through metal. You and, hurt your hands. <laughs> and don't yeah. try to use these to cut through leather because it won't work. What is this contraption? This, it's a variable blade lace cutter. You see the leather through? These are really sharp. They cut the lace as you yank it through. Damn. And then, lastly, everybody's favorite the tool. The super tool! The super tool, the Dremel. Dremel. Dremel! The Dremel can do a lot of different things, and I would highly recommend purchasing one of these. Typically, they run about $40. I got mine on sale. It has metal cutting blades, sanders, polishing bits, and uh, it has a drill. 
It has a lot of really good pieces. Both metal and wooden. Try to yeah. make sure that you don't use your wood on your metal because you will destroy your wood bits. Uh, I've got a cheap one from Harbor Freight Tools. It's not a great tool, so yeah. Uh, spend money on your tools if you can. There are other tools that you can get, like the like a sawzall, the, yeah. just the small hand-operated uh, saws. Um, you can get small sanders. Palm sanders. Uh, yeah, small palm sander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can Save get... Save time. Yeah. Stain with... stuff. Stain stuff. Stain stuff. If it's wood, stain it. Don't... <laughs> you don't want to be at a convention and then have it rain and you're just like hiding all of your wood things. No, the just stain stuff, make it nice. It looks better anyway. Yeah. J just to correct, when I said stain, I meant finish. I usually get a stain and finish yep. uh, combo, yep. so just to save myself some time. Along with finishing things, you want to do that with leather as well. You can actually get this at Walmart and Target. It's mink oil. You rub mm. a light coat onto your unfinished yeah. leather. Not made with real minks, by the way. They don't grind them up and put them in the can. Not no. anymore. No. The dual finishes that it colors and finishes the leather. Uh, we prefer to do the two-step finish just because the it's easiest for us. The mink oil also smooths the color out and yeah. it waterproofs it. And it Very also well. makes the, the leather a little bit more supple. Also, don't spill this on anything. It will stain everything. <laughs> oh, no! Well, luckily, oh, luckily, no. well, you may have denatured alcohol <laughs> or acetone, and this takes paint off of any surface pretty well. Yeah. Just make sure that you don't put it on a, a pre-painted surface, because it will take all, it will take everything off. Oh, yeah. I, when I wash stuff off, I usually prefer like that, uh, what's it, orangey stuff that has yeah, like the, the, the mechanics, the grains. Grit. Oh, it's yeah. great. Yeah. It's awesome. And that works, it great. Also that works smells, great for pine pitch, too. Yeah, it yeah. also smells really, really nice. The multimeter yeah. is your friend. A fantastic tool, especially if you don't want to constantly burn out all of your LEDs. <laughs> Since most of the batteries that you're going to get, except for the button cell batteries, like the watch batteries, they either have too low of a voltage, or when you put them in series, they have much too high of a voltage. Either way, your LEDs won't work. And then investing in resistors. So, and I like to point out that if you're going to start doing complicated electronic things, you could probably invest in something like an Arduino board. Um, or I've got a little Raspberry Pi here. It's a neat option, uh, especially the, the Arduino stuff. It's actually really easy to learn. You can pick it up whether you run Mac, Linux, Windows. Uh, that's kind of, you know, advanced stuff. Um, none of us have gotten into it. I know a couple people who have, and I'd love to take that uh, Raspberry Pi and start doing something with it. Good luck. You know, happy happy shopping with antique stores, and uh, you'll hopefully find something really neat. I found this while we were taking pictures. We bought something at every one of those stores that we talked about because... We went in with the intention of taking pictures only and we left with stuff. Also, be safe. Wear your masks, use proper ventilation, you wear your goggles and, and gloves. your gloves. Yeah. Everything you do, it's better safe than sorry. Alright, well. Cool. So we hope you enjoyed. Uh, this was episode 5 of Antiford On Air. Bye.